Hi everyone, this is Mr. Mike for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. Just checking out a plate. This uh, plate measures just a hair over 10 inches. Mr. Mike, why in the world are you looking at plates? What does this have to do with ancient animals? Well, I'll tell you in just a minute. First of all, thank you for tuning in. We do this every day, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mr. Mike's Dino a Day for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center, where we tell you a little bit about an ancient creature, and then I write a poem about it so you can remember even more about it. So, today's animal is a swimming creature, not classified as a dinosaur. So once again, why do I bring up a plate? Well, this is a 10-inch platter, okay? A 10-inch platter pretty big compared to my head. All right, if I would measure my head from the chin to, you know, nearly the top of my skull, you have about somewhere in the neighborhood of 9, 10 inches. Well, we believe this animal had an eyeball about 9 to 10 inches wide. It was big and bulging and since it was a seagoing animal, it was a marine animal, it had something inside the eyeball that many animals, especially dinosaurs, uh, had. It's called a scleral ring. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Scleral. It is uh, spelled S-C-L-E-R-A-L. Scleral ring. And what it was is these small overlapping bones that uh, were in a circular pattern that sat in the eyeball that helped the eyeball keep its shape. Now, why would a seagoing marine animal, I shouldn't say seagoing, it lived in the water all the time. It was a marine animal. Why would it have these? Well, we believe that this animal went very deep into the water and sometimes had to come up quickly or dive deeply because uh, we've actually found evidence of the poor thing uh, in its, in its uh, bones. We found evidence of something called decompression disease and that is uh, another fancy way of saying the bends sometimes the animal came up and went down too quickly and when that occurs uh, gases are released which can uh, infiltrate the blood and cause uh, severe pain so maybe it did that to escape uh, some big predators or maybe it did that as it was diving after uh, some squids that it was dining on this animal is called Ophthalmosaurus, ophthalmosaurus, a really, it's, it, it looks a lot worse, the word, to pronounce than it actually is. If you've ever been to uh, an ophthalmologist, what does that have to do with the eye? So this animal was named ophthalmosaurus because it had gigantic eyes. Now, when we talk about the size of uh, animals' eyes, we got to put it in perspective. For example, the ostrich has a very large eye compared to the size of its head. Okay, So if um, you were a big animal, we would expect you to have big eyes. If you were a small animal, we would expect you to have small eyes. This was a medium-sized animal. Let's say uh, Ophthalmosaurus was about 20 feet long. Think of a dolphin, but much bigger. But its eye size compared to its body size was pretty large. So here's what Ophthalmosaurus looked like. Zoom in on the eyes. Very large. The size of, uh, you know, about a dinner plate. Bulging out. And really, if you didn't look at that, you could almost say, oh, it's a dolphin. Yeah, but bigger. And take a look at the tail. This is known as the caudal fin, and it's been described in terms of its shape as half moon shaped. Uh, this would allow, and look how large it is compared to the, the rest of the animal. So you know that this thing was built for speed. It would uh, flick that tail back and forth, propelling it through the water very quickly to go after animals. So it would dive down to go after them. And because it had very large eyes, it probably did very well in the deep, dark 
ancient seas. Uh, having a big eye allows more light to come in, which allows you to see better. So the larger the eye, in most cases, comparatively speaking to the rest of the body, the, uh, the better it can see in uh, dark situations. So this is called ophthalmosaurus. You want to say it with me? It's not too hard. Ophthalmosaurus. Now, here we go. Saurus at the end of an animal name. Most of the time when you hear Saurus, you think dinosaur. Is this a dinosaur? Mm -mm. Not even close. Definitely not a dinosaur. It lived about 165 to 160 million years ago. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 feet. Uh, the, the measurement I saw was 19 and a half. It is a piscivore, which we just talked about. Uh, the different kind of diets that these uh, animals have. A piscivore or piscivore means it ate fish, or it could have been a molluscivore, maybe it ate mollusks. Uh, we think it ate squid. There's evidence, we have a lot of uh, specimens of this animal, so we know a lot about it. We know that it, uh, we, we found fossilized pregnant females, and we found baby uh, ophthalmosauruses in the female. So we know that it gave birth at any one time to multiple babies, and as soon as they emerged mom would push them to the surface uh, so that they could get a breath of air it uh, had somewhere in the neighborhood between two and eleven different little uh, ophthalmosaurus pups inside mom waiting to be born so we do know a lot about it uh, discovered in 1874 by an extremely important uh, paleontologist named in 1874 by Harry Govier Seely. Now, Harry found the animal, named it Ophthalmosaurus, and it has had several names since. In fact, famous paleontologist O.C. Marsh also weighed in with the discovery. But most of them all come back to uh, Harry Seely's Ophthalmosaurus genus. Uh, but in 1888, a few years after he named Ophthalmosaurus, Paleontologist Harry Seeley came up with this idea of how to categorize dinosaurs. This is extremely important, and it has lasted uh, till today in terms of how we categorize dinosaurs. Either being Saurischian, now if you think of Sar, Dinosaur, Ophthalmosaurus, Sar means lizard. Or Ornithischian, Ornithischian, Ornithomimid, Ornith, that has to do with birds. And it's referring, Harry was referring to the makeup and the structure of the hips. So you have two different kinds of dinosaurs and how they are uh, categorized, either being Saurischian, which is lizard-hipped, which uh, is kind of their hips are here and their legs are sprawled out to the side, or Ornithischian, where their legs are more underneath their hips, which uh, makes the dinosaurs faster. Okay, so lizard-hipped bird hipped Harry Seeley came up with this concept it has been uh, discussed for since 1888 so you figure 1988 that was a hundred years and now we're working on the second hundred years so this theory of Harry's is still uh, still good today so we know that it, it uh, ophth ophthalmosaurus resembles a, resembles a dolphin but much bigger uh, it's had huge eyes about actual size uh, compared to the rest of the body really if you think about a dolphin if you've seen a dolphin at a dolphin show their eyes are you know maybe this big and here you have ophthalmosaurus with eyeballs that big so the reason we have those uh, scleral rings that I was talking about earlier the bone structure that helps to hold the uh, eyeball it's hold, help hold its shape is because uh, when you're an animal that's going to these depths, the water pressure on an animal as it dove to the deep depths, the murky, dark uh, water, the pressure would increase and the pressure on an animal physically that would compact an animal and you know, squeeze an animal, that, those bones in the eyeball helped the animal keep the size, you know, the, the shape of its eyeball, protected it. So very interesting. So it was a good hunter at low uh, low, uh, very, very deep oceans. Uh, it went after squid, and it was very fast. 
So let's give you another look at Ophthalmosaurus, and then we will read today's poem written for you by yours truly, Mr. Mike, the Ophthalmosaurus. Thanks again for tuning in. We do this every single day, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. And then we post all of our videos on YouTube. Just look for Mr. Mike Scrignoli and you will find them all there. Ophthalmosaurus. It seems we tend to fixate on, on how large some beasts would grow. We rightly are astounded by their size from long ago. Considering sheer size is fun, but now let's take a peek at something else that's sizable that makes this beast unique. It's called Ophthalmosaurus, the eye lizard, quite a name. And here is why its eyes have brought it such profound acclaim. Of course, its eyes were huge, and that is certainly germane, but just how large they were, I feel I need to now explain. It has to do with body mass compared to eyeball size. So if you have a giant beast, you'll likely have big eyes. But old Ophthalmosaurus had some eyes so sizable, if we'd neglect to focus, that'd be inadvisable. With careful measurements, we noticed eyes would likely be the size of dinner plates, so in the depths it could well see. It almost looks cartoonish with its eyes so large and round, but for a swimming beast, it had the largest eyes around. This prehistoric creature grew to almost 20 feet. It prowled the ocean's depths with special fins which made it fleet. Resembling a dolphin, it'd be easy to confuse, so if you were mistaken, we would certainly excuse. We think Ophthalmosaurus cruised the deepest murky seas and used his giant eyes to search for tasty squids with ease. Its caudal fin was half moon shaped, designed to make it quick. It snatched up fleeing fish as it deployed a fearsome flick. And so, Ophthalmosaurus is renowned for certain traits, its eyes so big and bulging and the buzz it generates. It's yet another creature that we should appreciate. Salute, Ophthalmosaurus. I don't think that it's too late. The Ophthalmosaurus eye lizard. Is it a lizard? Mm, no. Uh, but we use saurus a lot when we comes to ancient creatures. So Ophthalmosaurus, ancient swimming creature, giant eyes, half moon shaped caudal fin, and some teeth to go after tasty squid. This is Mr. Mike for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center with episode 69 of Mr. Mike's Dino a Day. We thank you so much for tuning in. Again, we do this every day, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are on, uh, watching this on YouTube at the Mr. Mike Scrignoli channel, I want to thank you for subscribing and for uh, liking the video. So thanks again. We'll do it again tomorrow live, uh, 10 a.m. I'll look for you then with my giant squid-like and hungry plate-sized eyes.